Uh, I want to introduce Mr. Varun Dawan, originally, originally from uh, Uttar Pradesh in India, but now living in Minnesota in the United States. Uh, it's very nice to meet someone that, who you never met before who shares something with you. So the, Varun and I both have a master's degree in economics. So it's nice to tell, right? Okay, Varun moved to the United States, say, 10 years ago, and he works now for five years for Microsoft. And he became, he was not a technician in the beginning, but he became interested in databases, and that's why he uh, focused his, his attention on databases and later on joined Microsoft. He's going to give us uh, his talk, and um, he appreciates if you keep your questions until the end so that he can finish his talk and then uh, fire off your questions. There is one more interesting thing. Uh, he has a presentation that you can follow through a bit.ly, and this bit.ly is going to appear in slide number Three. towards the end, right? Three. Towards the end, so that he, you can share the demo with him. Yeah? Okay, give him a big hand, Varun Nawan. <laughs> Well, hi everyone. Uh, I think Martin already did good introduction, so I'll you know leave that part out. But thanks for being here. I'll help you find the coffee if you haven't found one already. Like one is already outside. The next best coffee probably we'll find it together over here. Uh, there's a little there's a little uh, demo in the end, and I also created a public facing demo. So if you if you have your machine ready, you can go to a little link when we come to that part, and then you can also play around um, to see what we have you know, to show over there. OK, so let's get started. We have a lot to cover. Um, can everybody hear me in the far end? OK, perfect, cool. So the talk is about using Postgres to locate the best coffee near you. Uh, Think of this as, you know, in a literally sense that you can almost find anything which you are looking for using the awesome database Postgres. So a little bit about me. Uh, I'm working for Microsoft, and then I have over 20 years of experience. Um, you know, I'm an accidental DBA. I was do studying something else. Uh, and then today, you know, I'm going to show you how using the semantic search in Postgres and then using the vectorized data we'll find something which we all love, which is coffee. I think most of us love, which is coffee, uh, using some exciting extension and capabilities. Little disclaimer that everything which I'm doing can be done in open source Postgres using open source extensions. So none of this is specific to using Microsoft tools and technologies. So let's get started. Uh, <clears throat> so now in this session, first I'm using a map. Uh, has anybody ever watched a cartoon series called Dora by show of hands? And then you know that Dora uses a map to find things. So that's my little daughter. She watches Dora. So I'm using you know, a Dora map to find something, because why not? So this is my map. We are going to start with a cafe data set. And then we are going to search for some coffee using the ways that we've been searching things in Postgres for years. We'll probably do some advanced things you know, with full text. Just in case you haven't played around with full text, this will good, give you a good primer. And at the step four and five, we'll move on with doing something more complex, but something more exciting. We're at a point whereby you can even talk and communicate with your database and just tell what you want. And this is all using your data set, which is stored inside the database. So we are good with that map. OK? So now imagine a scenario, and I have to build one. So I'm on a family vacation, uh, let's say in a state like Delaware. Now I've enjoyed a beautiful day at the exhibits you know, in Delaware Art Museum. And like after a hectic day, all I need is coffee. Uh, I want to relax. So I'm looking in for something like an outdoor seating. I have kids. Uh, so probably something within walkable distance, like you don't want to go very far you know, with kids. And then I also have a pet dog, so something probably pet friendly. You know. So these are the conditions, and I'm looking in for coffee nearby. 
So now Postgres offers geospatial and vector capabilities that can actually help us do this kind of you know, complex analysis. Using Postgres and then combining it with powerful extensions like Vector and PostGIS, we can actually turn our thoughts something like more complex, uh, which we call semantic search, and get results which are robust and you know, context aware. So today we'll find the perfect coffee spot, not just based upon the location, but also based upon the vibe of the place uh, that we want. So let's get started with the step one in the map, which is the cafe data set. So for this particular uh, presentation, uh, I worked hard and then figured out that there is actually one data set, which is Yelp. Um, so to kick things off, we'll be using the Yelp open data set. So this is available for anybody to use, just in case if you go back, you want to try this out. Uh, this data set, it's a pretty big data set and a complex one. It contains you know, multiple businesses, uh, information, including location reviews and categories. So almost 6.9 million reviews are there. Uh, 150,000 businesses are there in this data set. There are like approximately 200K pictures, and then it covers 11 metro areas. So a lot of data, a lot of diverse data set. So for our purpose, we'll be only concentrating on two different aspects. So I'll be concentrating on the business, which contains the address, the business. So in this particular case, all the cafes, all the restaurants, uh, think of all the categories and you like whether it has a parking lot, whether it's two level, one level, whether how many different types of card it accepts, all those things. And then the other thing which we'll be concentrating on is reviews, which is actually the gold mine of the data, where people like you and me, we go, we you know dine and we drink coffee and we leave reviews. And those reviews are gold mine because every word that we type in over there in the review has a direct literal sense, plus it has an indirect sense which we'll understand in a vector space. So that's our data set, and this data will become the foundation of our search uh, for the perfect coffee spot near us. So that's a little link for the data set. Now, these two tables, business.json, this is how you know the data looks like. So sorry for the small font. Uh, but that's the JSON, and the key things which I'm looking in for over here, uh, obviously most of the things are important, but some of the things like there is categories and there is attributes, the days which is open. Is it open right now? That's very important because finally, you know, I just want to have coffee right now, not in future. So all those things are there. And then the other important table I just spoke about is the review data set. So again, Lot of, uh, you know, lot of information by which you can actually do this kind of a combine, but the key information is this text, you know, a great place to hang out after work, the prices are decent. Each and every word in this particular review can help us you know, find the great coffee spot. Okay, so now that we've through with the uh, first part of our map journey, like cafe data set, let's move on to the second part, which is, you know, let's, let's start searching, you know. So for this particular purpose, there are things that I'm just made it a little up. So all that JSON, which you see, I've already imported inside, you know, a Postgres database. And, you know, it's, it's all there. So I won't be spending a lot of time, you know, over there. Neither I'm actually not very good at it. So, yeah, so that part is already done. So now we already have this data set over there. So now, let's say if you, are, you have all this data inside a Postgres table, and you were to write a query, and which I'm going to show you in a minute, in the, the real demo, uh, what kind of query will you like write for finding a coffee or finding a, you know, finding a place which serves coffee? So you will start with something like an I like, where you, know, you will search for reviews table, and you will search for reviews where reviews are like a restaurant, or reviews are like cafe. So like, pretty meaningful search, and we've been doing this kind of a search in Oracle, SQL, Postgres for years, for decades, and it kind of completely works, you know. So in this particular demo, so that's the, the, the real uh, data. So maybe I'll just play the demo here, okay? So uh, it's going to show, maybe I'll just zoom, yeah. 
So I'm just showing a version of my server. So I'm on 16.4, so nothing, nothing too fancy over there. Uh, and this is the sample data, which I have in my table. So you know, all the review ID, user ID, but the most important column being the text, where you see actually the reviews which I've imported. And I'm just going to search, you know, do a basic search, which I just showed you, do an I like search on restaurants or cafes. And then, hey, I'm also passing on, you know, a city where I'm searching for the coffee. So let's just run this. So yeah, so I run this kind of a thing, and I get good enough results, you know. So I get the business name, which is all the restaurants. I get text, and if I click on the text, whatever I search for, I do see, you know, those things are showing up. So pretty reasonable. But what if I, if I try to do something more nuanced, and then try to search for coffee with the attributes which I'm looking, you know. So if I look for coffee, or cafe with chill vibes, you know. Let's search for this and see what happens. Well, I get nothing, so that's expected. So I like search is a basic pattern matching search which just goes and look for an apple to apple and an orange to orange comparison. It does not really understand the context. It does not understand the whole contextual part of it. So I'm going to move on and say that this approach is simple, but has its own limitation when it comes to a complex comparison. So for example, if I search for something like cafe with chill vibe, this may not obviously return the accurate data. In this particular case, it doesn't even return anything. OK, so well, fine. First two part in our map, we had, you know, we tried searching for coffee with an eye like. It semi worked, but does not got what we want. I still want to, you know, walk and find the nearest coffee. So I'm going to go move up in the chain and go to a full text search. So next, we use the Postgres full text search capabilities. Now, it's very important to note that full text is all built inside the Postgres. You don't have to install any extensions, you don't have to do something separate. Uh, full text search basically allows us to find phrases, which is like more nuanced, more complex, and accurately you know, start getting the data. And what it does is when you build a full text index, it's basically create a hierarchical order of the words. So in a review, it takes out all the punctuations and it finds the main words. And then it also you know, creates a dictionary and try to find how many times the word is repeated. So it's it's little complex. You know, It tries to get the job done. So here in this example, we search for cafes with spec specific characteristics, like uh, text search uh, to the TS query, which is a full text function. And I'm looking in for, in the English dictionary language, anything which has restaurants and cafe. So that's what I'm looking, like full text search. And then obviously, I'm looking in specific region, which is Wilmington. So I go over here, and I pull up the full text search. So let's play this. So, so, so same, so same Postgres uh, version, and then I'm going to just go and alter table and add a column uh, of the type TX, TS vector. And remember, see that I don't have any extensions. I'm not installing anything separate. It's just, it's just available. So I'm going to install that, uh, add that column to the table. The second thing which I did it, once the column is added, then I'm going to update the column and pass on you know, the text uh, which I had from the review. So I you know, feed in all the text into this TS vector column. And the third thing is I'm going to create a journalized inverted index, or aka gin index, which is kind of recommended for doing a full text search. And once I do all that, maybe I can just do a little sample over here. So that's my full text, you know. So that's my actual review, which is text. And that's how you know, the full text column looks like. So it picked up the main words. It also picked up number of times this word has been repeated. And then you know, that's how you know, it has all the index. So it has some contextual sense that you know, what is this, you know, what is this uh, data contains, OK? Let's, let's move on with the actual search, which we want to do. So now we are going to do a full text search using a TS query, again looking in for restaurants and cafes. Okay. 
And this is this is the this is the result that we get, you know, from this kind of a query. So again, this is slightly more contextual. I'm still getting, you know, all the restaurants, all the cafes. It's understanding more nuanced. And I can even do a web style search query, which is a more complex on this full text. So I can call the function web search to TS query with all the attributes like dogs allowed, pets allowed, pet friendly. And still gives me data, like. However, moving on, if I do the kind of query which I wanted to do, which is cafe with chill vibes, I do get, you know, I don't get anything. So still slightly away, you know, it's still little better as compared to the ILOC operator, but I'm not getting the easy way to find something, you know, which I'm looking in this particular case, that thing being coffee. Okay, so we did full text. It's, it's better for phrase-based searches, but struggles with nuanced queries like cafe with chill vibes. So let's move on with our semantic search. Now, before we begin with the semantic search, the foundation of semantic search is vector. So we're going to do a little detour and understand what is vectors, and we've been hearing so much about it. So I'm just doing a vector 101 at a very basic foundational level. So think of vector as list of numbers that represent items or anything in a higher dimensional space. So for example, uh, if you say a dog, a vector, for a, a, a vector number for a dog could be 0, 07, 0, 08, or 0, 05. And each number in a vector is a dimensional in, in this space. You know? So as I'm, this is a very simple visualization. Um, in graph shown over here, there are three dimensional vectors, but typically vectors that can have hundreds and two hundreds of dimensions are harder to visualize. In this particular case, a vector for a string dog compares it to a vector for a string cat, and each vector number is considered a dimension in space. Um, often we don't know what exactly number means, so if you just see 0, 07, 0, 08, 0, 05, you don't know what it is, but on a vector uh, dimension or in a vector space, they make sense, you know. So you can see the dogs and cats, even though are not really same thing, different things, but they are quite related because they both are pets. Obviously, cats are better, but they both are pets. So generating vectors, so one way of you can generate vector is using any kind of vectorization model. In this particular case, uh, as an example, I'm showing a very old model, which is word to vec so if you feed in a dog, you get this kind of a vector generated. I can probably show you a little demo. And for a cat, you can see uh, like a number generated over here. So let me, by praying to a demo god, just see over here. So OK, well, I've already written over here. But if I, if, if I, do, if I pull up a word to vec, you can see, oh, you cannot see? OK. Well, now you can see. OK. So yeah, so I put in a dog over here. And you can see how word to vec pull up things. And it finds you know, things which are more similar, like cat, horse, child. Now, you can also compare it with something which is like more sophisticated, like an open AI model, which has 1536 dimension versus a word to vec which is like 300 dimensions. So you can again see there are many similar things. It's like dog, for some reason, is very close to God over here. But yeah, but you can make sense of it, you know, that this is, this is how the vector data looks like. So back to the presentation. And then down below, I'm just comparing, you know, some of these vector, you know, models, which you can see. Now, why should we care about vector and why should we care about vector embeddings, you know? So similarity and search are two different criteria that we should search about. So if you see, like, this is a 3D diagram or a model to show that if you search for something like a coffee over here, and then you can see the distance of coffee from other things, you know, like, for example, chocolates or honey, uh, there are things, you know, which are very close versus things, you know, which are not too close in coffee, I don't know, like, something over there, uh, products or prices, like they, they just do not directly relate to coffee. Uh, so they are far, far in the dimension. The second thing which we bothered is the search. So if you have all this kind of a vectorized data in, stored inside your database, and you take a new string, let's say an arbitrary string, and then pass it on, 
then you can compare that arbit arbitrary string by vectorizing it with the vector data that you already have inside the database. So remember, search and similarity, these are two different things. If you bring them together, you can build a, a very strong search algorithm uh, to do meaningful searches or what we call contextual searches with, with your data. Now, the example which I've shown you is from one of our colleagues, you know, Pam, Pamela Fox. You can go and probably, you know, like these slides will be available so you can, you know, use this, this particular tool. The other thing is that I can show one more uh, Yeah, like when you do things live. OK, I kept this embedding model also ready. So you can also go and like search. This is a way of visualizing vector. So in this particular case, I can say visualize dog again. I don't. OK, and then probably search for dog. So you can see it gives a distance score. And then you can find, you know, how, you know, how is dog close to many other things, you know, which are similar. So it's just a very simple way of visualizing the vector. Uh, you can go and you can play around and see something like that. I'm go to, going to leave a link for this. Okay. Back to, yeah. So. Okay, so we've, we've, we've seen, you know, here's the link for what I've shown, the project TensorFlow. Um, so we've, we have understand how to generate, how to visualize vector. And now, if we bring all these things together and say that with using all the extensions that we have available, so I'm using the Azure um, OpenAI extension in, in Azure Postgres. However, there are many extensions which are available, like, for example, PGAI, which is open source. So using any of the vectorized extension on the PG vector extension, you can vectorize the data and you can store the vector data. So this is how the data gets stored. So you can have business and then you can have the description of the business, which will be stored in all these long form vector, you know, documents, which I just showed you as an example for cats and dogs. OK, so now that we understood, you know, what are vectors, let's go back to our search. Um, boy, we still need to find coffee, so let's hurry up. OK, so now that we have the data vectorized, let's dive into doing a semantic search. So imagine, again, it's the same table. Now I have a vector column which is added, which is description underscore vector. And when I'm doing a search, instead of a where clause, I'm passing on the vector, you know, the vibe which I was looking, which is like cafe with chill vibes, you know, the contextual, uh, the contextual uh, element that I was looking for my search. The, the thing that you might ask is like, why am I using, you know, why am I passing something to filter in a where clause, in, in an order by clause, but not in a where clause? So key thing to understand is when you use the vector similarity search, we are trying to rank all the available business based upon how closely they relate to what I am looking. So unlike a traditional search, a vector comparison is not about filtering things. It's not about out of a million rows, I just want to filter two rows. Instead, it is about sorting the results and then trying to get the results that we want closest you know, on the top. So it's like a Google search or a Bing search and trying to get the first two or first three results only is that you're doing this inside your database for your table. So I have a very simple example which I thought of. So let's say if you have a tech video library where you have thousands of you know, videos and you're searching, for, uh, you're searching for content like where keyword like is database because let's say you're beginning in that particular field and you only have videos for Postgres, but just because you're doing a keyword search for a database and it does not contain the word Postgres, it doesn't show up. In a vector space, this becomes different because in a vector space, database and Postgres are related, you know, in some distance as I explained. So now if you search for databases, even something which contains Postgres will show up because it has the contextual meaning that, hey, these two, like, you're talking about database and Postgres is, is arguably the most, uh, the most uh, best database which is available, you know, right now in the open source. So now that I have the vector data, I want to combine it with the hybrid search. So, so I have the cafes with the chill vibes, which is all good. Like I'm getting a lot of cafes, 
But remember, you know, the key thing is to find something near me. So which means that I need to have some sort of uh, address data, some sort of, you know, geospatial data. So luckily, I had the geospatial coordinates in the Yelp data set, so I, which I, you know, again, imported in my table. So these are the geospatial points which are stored over here in the, uh, you know, in, in a specific column. And now when I'm doing the query, I'm saying, you know, that, hey, I'm, order, you know, I'm again passing on the order by class. I'm again searching for cafes. The only thing is now I'm passing more nuanced context, and I'm saying cafe near Delaware Art Museum with outdoor seating and pet friendly. So I'm passing on the more, uh, more data and more context to my search. So I have a little demo uh, to go along over here, but you know, in the interest to save time, I've created a little app. Uh, pray to demo God, it works. Uh, okay, it shows up over here. So I took all that data which we wanted to find, you know, all the queries, and you know, took this hybrid query which I've written. Basically, I can probably show the hybrid query over here. So that's the hybrid query. Let me drag it. Okay, and yeah. So you see, I've written this particular query. Sorry for a little small font, uh, and I'm passing on. Um, all the data, so this is basically the coordinates of Delaware Art Museum, which I'm passing. And then I'm passing my text, which is coffee place, um, and where is my order by? So that's my order by, so cafe near Delaware Art Museum with outdoor seating and prep friendly. So, and I'm limiting for 20 results because obviously it's, it's about distance, so I just need you know the things which are closest match to what I'm looking. So I. Obviously, I can run this, but I baked all this into a little Python app to show you. So that's the Python app. So I'm, I can search for Delaware Art Museum, and then I, OK. So these are the 20 results which I got. And I'm actually getting you know, good enough information. So it's sorted on the reviews, and like I get first 20 results. And they are like everything which is clo closer to the museum, you know. So it, it's, it's pretty good. It just works for my case. But then I want to go further and see how I can make this further better. So let's see. It's a little too tough to switch to. OK. I'm going to. Close this. Probably click present again. OK. I think now I probably will get it. No. Maybe I'll just move a little slides further, yeah. Sorry about a little. OK. So the final thing that I'm going to do is show you the uh, retrieval augmented generation with all the data that we generated. So let's understand what is retrieval augmented generation, and then we'll use those 20 results that we got. So RAG is, uh, is basically getting the information and feeding it uh, to the AI, to our LLM, large language model, and make sure you know, that responses that we are getting is not just based upon the training data that LLM is trained, but basically based upon the data that we are passing. So we already did a lot of work. We already generated a very beautiful query. Uh, for cafes near Delaware Art Museum with chill vibes, which are pet friendly, you know, has outdoor seating. So my data set already is very good. Can I pass on this particular data set um, back to LLM and then say, hey, you study this data set and then give me responses based upon this data set. And do this all in the real time, like not do this sequentially. So 
if if I were to do this, uh, this is how this is how I'm going to do. So drag retrieves the relevant information from our vectorized data set and passes it to a large language model. So LLM then references this context data outside the training data and give you the highly relevant results. So in this particular case, you can follow along. A user passes on search query, which is nothing but our CT or a basic SQL query. I pass it on to Azure OpenAI embedding model, can be anything else. I stored this data inside the Postgres database, the tables which I have shown below. From this, we ran the query where we got the relevant coffee reviews. The just I showed you, you know, those 20 coffee reviews. Now, instead of consuming the instead of consuming the result from step three, I'm going to pass on this data to a step four, which is say, let's feed this data into LLM and then say, use this as your grounding data, right? And then let's give me the final recommendation of the coffee. So for this, let's again switch, you know, to the real app. And that's my real app. Okay, uh, so over here, um, I'm using a token and I'm you know, connecting to a, you know, OpenAI endpoint, so I'm connected over here. I'm using the latest model, GPT-4.0. And the 20 results which I've got, I've saved it in that JSON file into a, you know, a basic file over here, so just like that. And then it just loads this data. So this is, this is the case where those 20 results, the data that I've got, I've passed it on you know, as a grounding data to my large language model. So exactly same 20 results. And now I can ask some pretty interesting questions. So this is the place where I'm going to start talking you know, to this data set using this little coffee bot I call. So I'll say coffee near me, okay. Yeah, it's running over here. Cool, so it says, well, there's a lot of coffee near you because all the 20 results which you gave is all coffee. Now I can go on and keep doing more fun things. So uh, with outdoor seating, Okay, running. So it keeps on refining you know, the results over here. That's the outdoor seating for you. Uh, pet friendly. I just have to keep hitting enter. Okay, so I get pet friendly option. Uh, five minutes walk from Okay, well, five minutes walk from the museum. Okay, still running. You see, you know, finally it came on to very specific results and it says, you know, it's just giving me one one result, and it's also giving me a recommendation that based upon the information from the document, the closest coffee shop is spread friendly with outdoor seating, and highly you know, recommended is you know, this particular coffee shop. Now, I'm going to do something more fun. Technically, this all data is for Delaware, so you know, I'm trying to find coffee shop in the Delaware. Now, my data set does not have the data from the place where we are, which is in Athens, so that's funny. I don't know how LLM is going to respond, but I can just say, uh, however, I am in Athens right now at Devani Caravel portal. Suggest something similar nearby. Okay, a lot of spelling mistakes, let's see. It's running, thinking, okay. 
says, coffee with outdoor seating, five minutes walk. However, I'm Diwani Carwell. So if you're currently in Athens and staying at Diwani Carwell Hotel, you might enjoy a coffee shop with outdoor seating, pet friendly atmosphere, similar to the ones that you have already found in Wilmington. And it goes ahead and actually, you know, suggests me two different coffee shops. Now the fun part is, Neither of this information is there in my data set. Like, it's, it's just getting this information from the context it is deriving. Now, just to see, uh, I can copy this place. I don't know. And maybe search it on Google. OK, so it is actually a place. Go to directions. Well, it's not five minutes. It is actually 14 minutes by walking and seven minutes by car. But it does find something nearby. So the point is that we are at a point whereby we can actually start talking to the data in whatever way we want till the time you have the data is stored inside Postgres, till the time you can vectorize it, and then you can pass it on to a RAG. You know, you can pass it on to an LLM using re retrieval augmented generation. You can pretty much do any kind of a sophisticated search with this particular data. Uh, for the promise that I made uh, that I have A demo also that you can you can follow. So if you are there right now, and then if you have a PC, you can actually go and click on this particular link, which is aka.ms pg disk and demo. You can click this right now. We built this app, very similar app for you. Instead of a Yelp data set, it is using an Airbnb data set. And you can actually do the same kind of a thing. If you like it, um, there's a whole repo which you can follow along. You can probably just use the code which is available. This will be like a found, founding code or basic code that you can, you know, you can build your own RAG app on top of your Postgres application. One key call out is that every kind of a vector data does need a vector index. And we've been hearing a lot like HNSW, IVF flat. For this particular example, I've used a specific implementation of the vector index, which is disk NN, which is disk approximate neighbor. Uh, disk approximate nearest neighbor. Uh, it's a newer implementation. It's just more accurate, but you're definitely not bound to use this. But if in case, you might just found it useful. So what did we achieve? So we started with the basic pattern matching. Uh, it's fast, but it lacks context. Next, we moved on doing a full text search, which is allows, allows for more phrase searches and ranking by relevance. Then we introduced semantic search, which uses the vector embedding, uh, which now has a meaning, not just the words. And then finally, on top, which you see of the pyramid, uh, we reach to retrieval augmented generation, where we combine all the semantic searches with generative AI model to get the more precise context-aware responses. In this particular case, the responses which were not even stored inside your database. So remember, the Yelp database does not have any information for things in Athens. And then we were still able to find a cafe, which is like seven minutes drive from here. Each step built on the last step, demonstrating the Postgres flexibility and availability and power for, you know, for getting you the most uh, better results, all using you know, some of these advanced extensions like PG Vector. So we now build a powerful system that you can use to find coffee you know, uh, with remarkable precision in this, particular, in, in this particular example. Everything which I showed you was built on top of Azure Database for Postgres Flexible Server. That's the managed server team uh, you know, that we have uh, in Microsoft, for which I am the product manager. Uh, it's, it's basic community Postgres. It's not, uh, it's not a fork. Uh, we just take the uh, community Postgres and build this whole uh, cloud-based tooling, manageability tooling around it. So do check it out. Uh, whatever you saw is you know, glimpsed of you know, how AI is coming, uh, not just to the GPT uh, search that you do, 
or not just to the Gemini search which you do, but it's actually coming on top of the data which you already have. So uh, it isn't the future, it's already happening. Uh, those are my social links. And then more importantly, you know, let me know whenever from this particular talk or using the repo which I shared, if you happen to build uh, your own rag-based application on top of Postgres using the vectorized data, you know, it will be good to hear about your experience. Uh, besides me, from Microsoft, you know, there's multiple uh, of my colleagues which are speaking at the conference. Some of them have already spoken. But some of them will be speaking between today and tomorrow. So do check out. Uh, do meet us at our booth. We've got some cool, awesome swag. Uh, well, we have Claire in the room. And uh, I want to call out that we run uh, a talking Postgres podcast. So do check it out. And yeah, and those are the dates for our upcoming events, you know, POSET events. Yeah, that's about me. Thank you. Thank you for this great talk, Varun. Um, anyone having questions? There's, there's a question over there, yeah. <laughs> thank you. First of all, thank you for the presentation. That was really nice. And can you please open the diagram with data flow, uh, the last one with uh, reg, uh, reg analysis and everything? No, no, the previous one, the data flow, even, even before it. Oh, OK, sure. Yeah, this one. So at step number four, we are passing all the data to OpenAI LLM, GPT-4.0. Uh, and uh, like, I may sound stupid, but why then we need step two and three? We can just pass the search query just to OpenAI and pass uh, the stages when we do RAG analysis. Why not? That's, that's, a, that's a good question. I'll repeat it. So. Why do we need you know, intermediate steps? Why can't we pass directly the knowledge you know, to the open AI? So I'm deconstructing the question in two parts. So for this particular demo, first I wanted to show the steps um, you know, in a more elementary way, the way I learned that, hey, first you get the data generated from AI. So you get the vectorized data, then you do a semantic search on it. And then once you get the most preferred or precise data set, then you take that data set and build a crowning model on top of that data set and then you know, work with AI. But in a perfect case, in a perfect real world, you don't have to do these intermediate steps. So that e example of this application, if you try out, you know, like this is like there are no intermediate results. You just do the search and you get that data. And it's already using you know, the RAG. You know. So you, you don't have to save the data into a JSON and then pass it back. It's already understanding you know, the top results, passing, uh, passing it on you know, to the OpenAI model, and then you know, getting you the more context-aware answer. Yeah. Yeah. I just broke it down exactly the way I learned it. Um, I thought it, probably I show the building blocks or the building elements of this here. So, so two things. My name is Stephen Keller. Just a trivia. Do you know that Athens is the best smelling city uh, in Europe, based on a on a, on a, on a little uh, um, research they made, because it has about 30 bakeries in a 10 square kilometers, so in Athens it's anywhere bakeries smelling well and giving coffee. By, by the way, now my question is, um, how would you wait more the distance in order to instruct? more the distance, I mean, which you didn't um, catch in, in that example of uh, 14 minutes. For sure. My bad. You know, I may have... I mean, you somehow passed, yeah. need so, to boost or something. Yeah. So remember, in this particular case, which I'm showing the hybrid search, um, the key thing is also I'm passing on, you know, I'm using the uh, post-GIS post data. So I'm storing the latitudes and longitudes in this particular column. 
Uh, and then I'm passing on the specific coordinates, and these are the specific coordinates for uh, you know, the Delaware Art Museum, and I'm just saying you know, the, anything which is in five kilometer of this distance. I know that, that I just suggested that in the rack, you could somehow rank more um, according to the decreasing, uh, increasing distance of the, uh, of, the, uh, yeah. of, the, of the coffee shops. Correct, yeah. So once you get these data, once you get the, within five kilometer, you get the distance sorted, then it's just a simple order by on the distance so that you start with the closest match and then you go on from there, yeah. So part of the 20 results are the closest radius of this, but you know, of the Delaware Art Museum sorted. But then I'm not just going, you know, to the things which is closest to me. I'm trying to find things which is okay, close, walkable distance, but also has all the other vibe that I'm looking or all the other criteria that I'm looking. Like it is to be pet friendly. Uh, it has outdoor seating. Um, all those, you know, things that I'm looking. At. So within that data set of 20 things, I'm trying to find something which is closest to my match here. Okay, I believe we have one more question here. Uh, <clears throat> thanks for the talk. Uh, it's kind of following on from that a bit, um, but which, with the uh, vector index, um, if you want to combine that with like the geospatial index, um, does that support like bitmax? Uh, scans or um, like which which index would actually get used by like this query? Um. I couldn't follow the question, but it is something to do with uh, you know what type of index works best. Vector index work best with the post GIS index. Is yeah, like if you can combine them like with the bitmap scan, or uh, if you want to do like fast ranking, that's based on both the. Um, distance and also the similarity of the vectors? Yeah, like if you see, you know, uh, over here for this particular example, I showed, you know, that uh, this example is based upon the disk NN index, which is, you know, the new implementation that came from the Microsoft research, uh, which we see, you know, for certain databases, for certain scenarios is faster uh, than HNSW, which is other popular index. Uh, and for this specific use case, we find that this is working best, and it's giving us all the sequential results rather than a lot of scans. Yeah. But uh, you know, but feel free. Uh, like a lot of indexes, how they work depends upon the context of the data. So in some cases, you know, a different index type, you know, may be better. Yeah. Any more questions? Well, thank you, Varun. Spanish talk. Yeah. Hold thank on. you. Thank you.